Question number two is about the battery in an electric car and it begins with part I, define the term electromotive force for the battery. Electromotive force is a type of voltage and we define voltage as the work done per unit charge. Work done is, uh, is energy transfer. Uh, so we can begin our definition here by saying is the energy transferred per unit charge. That's not the whole story. That would be a definition perhaps of voltage, but not of electromotive force. Electromotive force is when that energy is being put into the circuit. So we need to say that is the energy transferred per unit charge from chemical energy to electrical energy. Now part two says show that the total charge Q that can be delivered by the battery is about three times 10 to the six coulombs. So let's look back at our question here. We know the EMF is 24 volts. We know the current is 200 amps and we know a time period here is four hours. Uh, let's think about what equations we can use. Well, we have this equation here, V equals W of Q. We don't know the amount of work done, so it can't be that one. So instead we can use Q equals I T. Now Q is the charge, I is the current and T is the time. So Q equals current for 200 amps multiplied by our time period, which is four hours. However, we almost never use hour as our time unit. The only occasion where you would use an hour would be when you're calculating it in kilowatt hours. Other than that, we need to use our standard unit, our SI unit, which is seconds. So multiply it by 60 to get it into minutes. And then again, by 60 to get it into seconds. That equals 2.88 times 10 to the power of 6 coulombs, which is almost equal to 3 times 10 to the 6. Finally, part 3. Calculate the total energy E that can be supplied by the battery at a constant EMF of 24 volts. So now this is where we need our equation here. We know that work done, that's a form of energy transfer, is equal to voltage multiplied by charge. It's just a rearranging of this equation. We've replaced the W for work done with an E for energy here, but that's otherwise there's nothing to worry about there. So that equals 24 multiplied by our previous answer here, 2.88 times 10 to the power of 6. And that gives us an energy of 6.91 times 10 to the power of 7 joules. Part B shows us a diagram here. The charge of the battery has a 30 volt output supplying a current I. The total resistance of the circuit is indicated by one resistor here, figure 2.1. The positive terminal of the battery here is connected to X. So we need to complete the circuit by drawing our battery between X and Y. The battery has a negligible internal resistance. So the negligible internal resistance part just means we don't need to show the internal resistance. We don't need to worry about it. We do need to draw a battery. Now the symbol for a uh, battery, uh, strictly speaking, is this. Although examples tend not to be too fussy if we use the symbol for a cell, which is like this. More importantly, uh, here is the polarity. So the long line there is the positive and the short line is the negative. It tells us in the question that the positive terminal of the battery is connected to X. So we need to draw our, our positive terminal there and our negative terminal here and connect them into the circuit. Part two, the potential difference across the battery remains at 24 volts. The current I provided by the battery charger is constant at 120 amps. So we need to show that the value of the resistance of R is 0 0.05 ohms. So if we're having 30 volts supplied here, but only 24 volts across these terminals here. That must mean that 6 volts 
are being dropped across the resistor. So the voltage across the resistor is 6 volts. The current through it is 120 amps. Therefore, the resistance is going to be V divided by I. So that's 6 divided by 120, which gives us 0 0.050 ohms, exactly as the question asked us to prove. The next part of this question asks us to calculate the power lost in R as the battery is charging. There are three equations for power dissipation, P equals VI, P equals I squared R, and P equals V squared divided by R. All three of these equations should work the same, provided we select the correct values. Remember, we're only considering the resistor R. So therefore, we are only interested in the voltage across R, not the total voltage. So the voltage across R is 6 volts. We inferred that in the previous question. The current question tells us is 120 amps. And the resistance is given to us in the previous question, which was a show that question, 0 0.05 ohms. As I say, we can use any of those. Personally, I would choose to use P equals I squared R here because we were given both I and R in the question, uh, just in case we made a mistake deducing that the voltage was 6. So power equals 120 squared, that's the current squared, multiplied by 0 0.05 ohms. And that will give us 720 watts. Finally, part 4, the efficiency of the charging process is given by the equation. Efficiency is input power from charger, take away power loss in R, divided by the input power from the charger. So we know the power loss in R, that is 720, but we're not sure what this input power from the charger is. If we look back to the previous part of the question, we can see that the charger is at 30 volts, and we know that it is producing a current of 120 amps. So voltage equals 30 volts, current 120 amps, and we can use power equals VI to work out the power output of the charger. So that would be 30 multiplied by 120, which is 3,600 watts. So now we know everything we need to know for this question. That is 3,600, and that is 3,600. So therefore, efficiency. equals 3,600, take away 720, divided by 3,600, which equals 0 0.8. Now remember the question is asked for the value as a percentage, so 0 0.8 equals 80%. C part I asks us to show that it takes about 7 hours to charge a completely flat battery. Now it's time to consider what we know here. We know that the total energy stored in the battery is 6.91 times 10 to the 7 joules. And we know that that energy can be supplied at a rate of 3,600 watts. Take away the 720 watts that is lost in the charger. So the power supplied to the battery when it's charging is 3,600 take away 720 which gives us 2880 watts power equals energy divided by time therefore time equals energy divided by power our energy here is 6.91 times 10 to the 7 joules that's the energy stored by our battery and the power that is supplied to it is 2,880 watts or 2,880 joules per second. That gives us an answer of 23,993 seconds. We now need to divide that by 60 times 60 
a node to get that into hours, which gives us 6.66 hours, which is approximately 7. Finally, calculate the cost of charging the battery at 26 pence per kilowatt hour. We know that the battery charger uses 3,600 watts of power, or 3.6 kilowatts. We know that the time is 6.66 hours. Therefore, the energy in kilowatt hours is 3.6 times 6.66, which gives us 24.0 kilowatt hours. And at 26 pence per kilowatt hour, that's 24.0 times 26 equals 624 pence.